Greetings and salutations, Jay here. In this video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Instead of making a how-to video, this will be a project overview video. One of my favorite things about programming is making and combining different components together and making them do something. Each component by itself can't really do anything, but when you combine them together, it makes something awesome. And that is what this video is all about. For this project, I used Python web scra scraping techniques to collect data with a MySQL database to store the data and a PHP web page to output the data. I'll give you an overview of the project with emphasis on why I did each thing. I'll also tell you some things I learned and what I would have changed. This video is going to be a relatively high level overview of the project. If you'd like to see a more in-depth video about each individual component, let me know down in the comment section. We'll get right into it after this short intro. Before I get into the project, let me give you some background. I'm going to try and do this without getting political. So there was an event that occurred in Charlotte, North Carolina in September of 2016. It was a big deal, people got upset, and there were riots. These riots were covered by local news stations as well as national news stations. Uh, what started out again uh, in that uptown city area, it basically turned into clashes and it broke out between protesters and police. The event could also be followed by listening to local police scanners on a website called Broadcastify.com. At the time, I had heard of Broadcastify, but I'd never really used it before. The way Broadcastify works is a pro feed provider tunes their radio to a specific frequency that is used by um, police offices, fire departments, or other emergency response um, organizations in the area. This radio is then plugged into a computer, which is connected to the internet, and the audio is streamed to Broadcastify servers and can be listened to by anyone who visits Broadcastify.com. On the night of the riots, I noticed a particular high number of people listening to the Charlotte Police Scanner. I'd never seen this many people listening to the scanner before, so I decided to record the number of listeners throughout the night and display the data in a graph. And this is where my project begins. The first thing I needed to do was to get the number of listeners from the Broadcastify webpage into my program. To do this, I built a Python web scraper. Although I choose to use Python for this component, it's worth mentioning that I could have used Java, Node.js, PHP, or one of many other scripting languages. I bet I could have even done it with auto hotkey. So what is a web scraper? For the purpose of this video, a web scraper is an automated script that visits a web page and collects data from the HTML. I'm a very visual learner, so when I think of a web scraper, I imagine a person sitting in front of their computer and constantly refreshing a web page and writing down data from that web page. Obviously, writing a script is less time consuming, less boring, and more cost effective than either sitting in front of a computer, refreshing a web page, and recording the data yourself, or hiring a person to do it for you. When writing a web scraper, there are two main techniques that can be used. The first method is what I refer to as the regex method, or regular expression method. What this method does is it grabs all the HTML data from the web page and searches it for a certain sequence of characters. In this example, I need to get the number of people listening to the scanner. I could search for a sequence of four numbers in a row, but I would run into a problem when the listener count went below 1,000 or above 9,999, because then the character count would be off. This would have been a problem, but I could have fixed it. But then I'm going to end up with a lot of data that I don't need or incorrect data. So although I could have used the regex method, I decided to use the parser method. In my experience, using a parser is much more precise than using the regex method. If you've ever worked with HTML, you know that an HTML web page is broken down into elements. Even if you've never worked with HTML, you can probably notice how each of these elements on the web page is broken down to an element in the code. And what the parser does is it searches down through all the hierarchy of all of these elements and finds text from one of these specific elements. So in addition to recording the listener account, I also recorded the name of the scanner 
And it turns out I decided to record listener counts for the Charlotte Fire Department and a few local amateur uh, radio repeaters. And I'm glad I decided to do this, and you'll see why when I show you the graph. And that's really all there is to the web, web scraper. It was pretty simple. It's not that complicated. All I had to do is grab the listener data and the name of the scanner. This brings us to the second component. Without a way to store the data, my web scraper would be essentially useless. For this, I chose to use a MySQL database. Again, it's important to remember that I could have used another type of database for this component. Generally, the database would be um, based on whatever scripting language you're using. So if I'd used uh, Java, I might have used JDBC, or if I'd used uh, Node.js, I might have used MongoDB, but I'd used Python and MySQL together before, so that's what I chose to use. I could have even written it just to a text file, but I'm glad I didn't because displaying that data would have been much more difficult. The database was super simple. Honestly, it was simpler than it should have been. It only had four columns, a primary key ID, the name of the scanner, the number of listeners, and the time recorded. If I'd done it right, I would have also included another table for the scanner names and used a scanner ID column as a foreign key. This would have made the database more space efficient because instead of storing 3,615 character varchars each day, it would have recorded five 15 character varchars and then 3,600 um, characters. But the way I did it worked. I want to emphasize the simplicity of the database. Always remember KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. So this was all of the script of the application, and I set up the Python script to run once a minute on a Raspberry Pi. That meant that every minute, the script would visit the web page and get the listener count for each scanner as well as the name. Then the script would open up a connection to the MySQL database and insert all of the data. Then the script would exit and run again one minute later. As it turns out, I should have set it up to run every four minutes because that's how often the web page I was scraping updated. So my script was basically recording duplicate data four times in a row, and then it would get new data and duplicate that four times in a row and do that over and over and over again. It wasn't a big problem, but it meant that my database was taking up about four times as much space as it really needed to because I had so much duplicate data. But it worked, and in my case, that was what matters. And that brings us to the final component, which was the HTML web page served over PHP to display the graph of the listeners over time. This is arguably the most important part of the project because without a way to display the data in a usable manner, the data is pretty much useless. This was also the component that I had the most trouble and regrets about. The web scraper and database were relatively simple, but I'd never created any kind of graph in HTML, and honestly, I don't even want to talk about it. I spent so much time on this component, it's almost hilarious. Nothing I tried worked. Part of this was because of the amount of data I was working with. I had thousands and thousands of rows of data, which is pretty small compared to some kind of enterprise level app, but it was pretty big for a PHP app running on a uh, Raspberry Pi. I tried using uh, JavaScript libraries and the amount of data that I was using would just crash my browser and ended up I used a PHP script to create an SVG graph and it worked but I wasn't really pleased with that. I really should have narrowed down the amount of data I was trying to display. There's really no reason to display more than uh, 1920 rows of data on a 1080p display because you literally run out of pixels to display the data but it worked and here's the final image I got the riots actually started on Tuesday night but I didn't get an idea to record the amount of listeners until Wednesday night the blue line is the police scanner and you can see the amount of listeners peaked right around this time and then right here the program appears to have broken, which, as it turns out, the police scanner stream was uh, taken offline at this time for operational security for the police. And you'll notice that a lot of the listeners seem to switch over to the fire department scanner when the police scanner goes offline. And all in all, it was a pretty cool project. You could really adapt it to track data from any other source you wanted to. For example, you could use it to track... Um, anything from trending Twitter tags, you could track the number of guests on a forum, 
Or you could set it up to go into your Facebook page and record how many of your friends are online at any given time. I hate to use cliches, but the possibilities are endless. As a quick review, the project contained three parts. It contained input, which was a web scraper which pulled data from broadcastify.com. There was a process of storing the data in a MySQL database. And then output was displaying the output to the user as a graph using a PHP generated SVG file. There were three things I would have changed. I would have run the script every four minutes instead of every minute because that's how often the web page actually updated. The second thing was I would have optimized the database storage, again, scraping every four minutes. And I definitely would have found a better way to convert the data into a graph. That was my biggest regret. I really hope you learned something in this video. If you liked the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Having a smaller channel, each like really makes a big impact. If you'd like to learn more about how I did it, more in depth for each component, let me know in, down in the comments and give me a subscribe. Hit me with that bell icon so you're notified next time I upload. Have a great day. I'm out.